One of the most frequent questions that I get from other lawyers is something like this. Can synthetic marijuana be tested for on GCFID or GCMS? Can marijuana be tested for on GCFID or GCMS? Can methamphetamine be tested for by GCFID or GCMS? The truthful answer is, it depends. Let's take, for example, the case of synthetic cannabinoids. Let's talk a little background first. Synthetic cannabinoids comprise the chemicals known as JWH-018, JWH-073, JWH-200, JWH-250, CP-47, 497, and canna bicyclohexanol. In order to be able to test for it, or any chemical, you must be able to uniquely separate it. This is the chromatographic, chromatographic separation based upon column selection and instrument conditions. And then be able to tell its unique identifying characteristic through its electron ionization and alpha cleavage proteinization through use of a mass spectrometer as the detector. Finally, once that occurs, then you must be able to quantify the uniquely separated compound that is later uniquely cleaved. It is essential to note that you must have unique separation before any of this can occur. Separation first. The problem as of now, with analytical testing for synthetic cannabinoids, the problem really is not so much the GC or the columns or the detectors, but the lack of standards, SRMs or CRMs, Certified Reference Materials. As we know, we prove separation by making a separation matrix, a sample that is purposefully spiked with a range of analytes derived from Certified Reference Materials to the target analyte, to later test through the instrument and then provide a method to prove sufficient resolution or separation between like compounds. Figure 1, which you are about to see here, is a ResTech catalog example of a separation chromatogram involving ethanol as a target analyte where CRMs of methanol, ADH, ETOH, isopropanol, and acetone and n-propanol were introduced into a vial using a specified method recorded below in the chromatogram. So without the certified reference materials, we have a real problem of proving separation. Again, without separation that is unique, we have no valid result. Unique separation depends upon proof through use of certified reference materials. As of yesterday, when I last checked, no company offers CRMs for any of these compounds. Further, there is another level of complexity. If one uses electron impact-based GCMS, we have a problem of the reference spectra for these compounds. In essence, all EI-based GCMS is basically computer-assisted pattern recognition. In order for that to work, one must have a reference spectrum for these compounds from a legitimate source such as NIST or Sigma Aldrich. NIST and Sigma Aldrich, for example, right now, are not carrying reference spectra for these compounds. It's only a matter of time as we know these compounds' molecular masses, and simple acid-based chemistry will enable us to determine how the spectra for these compounds should look in EI-based GCMS. This will also change rapidly as a lot of this year's American Academy of Forensic Science workshops and oral presentations concerning the analytical chemistry of these compounds, the pharmacokinetics of these compounds, and the pharmacodynamics of these compounds will be featured. There's a lot of money to be made here in the discovery of these new compounds.